themselves. And when you look at the National Center for Health Statistics, which is part of the CDC, the number of suicides from firearms in 2016 was 22,938 lives. So when people say they want guns for protection, we have to ask the question, well, what else? What else is out there? And what can we do to prevent this from happening? Uh, the CDC also says that suicide is up 30% in the past 15 years. So this is something else we also have to keep in mind. I was just at a conference that was talking about this, mental health, guns, depression, and how much more likely you are to be successful in a suicide attempt if a gun is available. And this is something we have to be very cognizant of. And one story that the, the presenter told that really hit me in the gut was they said if there is a, um, a young person, a teenager, who's considering suicide, if there is a gun available, they'll consider for 15 minutes before they actually pull the trigger, whereas adult will consider for up to two months before they mm. try to take their own lives. And then he went on and told the story of a, uh, a young boy who was in high school who decided, you know, his girlfriend broke up with him, he was very depressed, he decided he was gonna get to his father's gun and he was gonna kill himself. And when he went to the gun uh, safe, his father knew he'd been depressed, so he bought one of the safes, I can't remember what they're called, but you can only open it with your fingerprint. He couldn't get the safe open. Five minutes later, one of his friends called him and said, hey, do you wanna to go to the mall? And it was because that safety measure was in place that that boy is still alive today. So the laws that we are trying to enact in Illinois have to, they have to cross an intersection because we, we are a very big and diverse state. So we have people in part of the state who don't want any gun laws, who want everybody to be able to, to carry, to bring it in wherever they want to go. And then we have people on the other side of the state that say, wait a second, we need gun safety. We, we need to protect ourselves and um, our, our loved ones from crimes <coughs> with guns or from hurting themselves. So in the legislature, it's up to us to find the middle ground. Where can we put in laws that will protect people from guns and find gun safety without going to one of the extremes? And so that's where some of the laws that we have passed in the past few years have fallen. It's in the, the, the center where it's gun safety issues. Recently, uh, the governor signed into law the Gun Dealer Licensing Act, which says that, <laughs> yay, <laughs> I do agree with that, you can clap for that one, uh, that gun dealers need to be licensed. It just, it kind of makes sense, and finally we have that in law now. We also have something called um, uh, the firearms, and I'm gonna get it wrong because, wait, hold on, I wrote it down. Uh, Firearms Restraining Order Act. I call it the FRA and I couldn't remember what it actually stood for. Um, this is kind of like a red flag act. And this passed, I believe it was a year ago. And what this says is if you think that uh, you have someone in your house who lawfully has a weapon, uh, but you think they are a threat to themselves or someone else, you can get a restraining order so that weapon can be taken away. Um, so these are the gun safety laws that we've been putting in place. Unfortunately, what we're finding is when people have done something that means their, their weapons need to be revoked, they might be getting a letter in the mail saying you need to turn your weapons in, but it's not happening. And so that's where we have to take our next step and figure out what can we do to make our society safer to make sure this happens. And I think this bill that's gonna be discussed tonight is the next step in that direction. And we need to keep hammering it home because the more we do to make sure our voices are heard that say we want gun safety uh, is very important because sometimes people on the extreme ends of the issue can be loud, but that doesn't mean that they're the only ones who have concerns. And we have to make sure that our concerns are met too. That's why it is so important and I'm so grateful that everybody is here tonight to talk about these issues. Uh, because if it weren't for groups like, I said, moms and people for safety, safer society and GPAC, we wouldn't be able to get this done. They are really the leaders in these causes. So thank you so much for coming out tonight and I'm going to turn it back to you.